Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again with the Economancer. So, like I was talking about earlier, we're going to be jumping into an introduction to cybernetics with uh, W. Ross Ashby. And so, the reason why for this is we've already kind of gotten introduction into communications theory. We've introduced some of Lumen's work, how it works in theology, and we've brought up cybernetics quite a lot, but we haven't really figured out what cybernetics is. And so, my goal in this video series is to actually just go through the book, An Introduction to Cybernetics by Ross Ashby, and really lay down what is cybernetics, how does it differ as an epistemological uh, underpinning and for sciences, theology, social sciences, so on and so forth. And so that is the purpose of this here. So. This is kind of the outline we're gonna go with what is cybernetics, so this is based on his work, and then change. Then we're gonna to move to a closing. All right, so cybernetics. We're gonna be embarking on this journey into a captivating world of cybernetics with a deep dive into this influential work. So, I wanna start off by saying, in the first chapter, Ashby begins by defining cybernetics derived from the Greek, Greek word kybernetes, which means steersman or governor. Um, and cybernetics is the scientific study of control and communication in both living organisms and machines, and it's really systems in general. It seeks to understand how complex systems are regulated and how they can adapt to their environment. Cybernetics examines the principles of feedback loops, which are essential in maintaining the stability of systems. These loops can be found in various fields such as biology, engineering, and economics. Ashby emphasizes that cybernetics is a multidisciplinary field and is not limited to any one domain. If you ask a modern cybernetician, they will say it's not multidisciplinary. It is transdisciplinary, that it exceeds all disciplines as it is something that binds all of them together. So Ashby argues that cybernetics is distinct from other fields of sciences because it focuses on the study of control and communications in systems rather than on the study of physical objects or natural phenomena. He suggests that cybernetics treats the subject differently by adopting a more holistic and system-oriented approach to understanding complex phenomena rather than breaking them down into their constituent parts, which I think is very important. So, what, what is next to bring up? So, from a philosophical position, Ashby's approach to cybernetics can be seen as part of the broader shift in scientific thinking that occurred in the early 20th century. The shift was marked by a growing recognition of the limitations of reductionist approaches to understanding complex systems and correspondingly emphasis on the study of systems as whole rather than as a collection of individual parts. This shift in thinking was influenced by a number of philosophical and scientific developments, including the rise of systems theory. The influence of cybernetics and information theory and the growing awareness of the interdependence of different fields of study has led us to where we are today, where, we, where you can't go anywhere without hearing someone say something about systems theory. So from this perspective, Ashby's approach to cybernetics can be seen as a response to those challenges posed by the increasing complexity of modern systems and the limitations of traditional reductionist pro approaches to understanding them. By emphasizing the study of control and communication in systems and adopting a more holistic approach to understanding complex phenomena, Ashby sought to provide a new framework for understanding and, and controlling behavior of complex systems. So now we're gonna look at these key concepts. First, we have variety. This is the number of possible states a system can be in. It's important to understand variety in order to predict the behavior of a system or control it. Stability, a system is stable if it can return to a steady state after being disturbed. Stability is a vital concept in cybernetics as it helps us understand how systems maintain equilibrium. Adaptation, this is the ability of a system to change its behaviors in response to external stimuli. Cybernetics seeks to understand how systems adapt in order to maintain this stability. So, 
In the second chapter, Ashby discusses the concept of change. Change is an essential aspect of cybernetics as it involves the modification of systems behavior in response to internal and external factors. Ashby emphasizes the importance of understanding the types of change a system can undergo, as well as the conditions that trigger these changes. By studying change, we can predict and control the behavior of complex systems. So the chapter starts out on the concept of transformation, which refers to a change in the state of a system. Ashby introduces three components of transformation. We have the operand, operator, and result or output. The operand is the starting state of the system, and we call this N. And this N is, for this example, the letter A. So the operator is the mechanism or process that transforms the operand. So let us suppose this next step is plus three. So the operator that transforms is plus three, and the result is a new state of the system in plus three. So if we have N is A, and then we have our operator, which is N plus three, and then we have our output, D, that is A plus three is D. Ashby then goes on to discuss the concept of transition, which refers to the sequence of changes that occur when a system is subjected to a series of transformations. He notes that there are three aspects of transition, the starting state of the system, the sequence of transformations, and the final state of the system. So, then we move on to systems closure, which refers to the fact that a system can only be transformed by the mechanisms and processes that are already present within the system. This means that the capacity for transformation is limited by the system's internal structure and organization. And so if you've ever heard me say something along the lines of, this system is operationally closed, but functionally open, which that means is the closure of the systems is based where it can only be transformed by the mechanisms and processes that are already present within the system. So for example, the economic system can only be transformed by what's happening in the economic system. If you have the political system imposing quote unquote transformation in the system, it doesn't actually transform it. It just makes some of the functions different, but the system's internal structure and organization set up where it goes next. So then Ashby discusses the different types of transformation. So we have one, one transformation is a type of transformation where a single operand is transformed into a single result by a single operator. Then we have many to one transformation on the other hand. So this involves multiple operands being transformed into a single result by a single operator. So identical tra transformations occurs when the operand and the result of a transformation are the same. Ashby notes that transformation can be repeated over time, leading to a sequence of changes that can be described as a product or composition of individual transformations. And so you have here, we have things associated with that change. So we have constraints. So it's factors that limit the possible changes in a system. And so one of the best ways to think about constraints from our uh, point of view uh, as people in the system. So if I want to do something, I'm constrained by the factors that limit that possible change in my system. So for example, I want to go to a theme park. What are the constraining factors? One, whether the theme park is open on the day that I want to go. Two, how many other people want to go to the theme park? Three, how much money I have in comparison to going to a theme park? Four, what are the other options that I have that could be substitution for that state? So no matter what's going on in the system, so the system itself has like infinite outcomes but is constrained in those infinite outcomes. And this is really important when you start getting into theories of the mind and how cybernetics sees the theory of the mind. Because even though we have this infinite set of processes and, and possible changes in the system of the mind, it is constrained by parts of the system. So state transition. So this is changes in states over time. And you know I went into that a little bit. And so, these are changes that happen over time, but they can't, they can be modeled mathematically, allowing us to analyze the dynamics of the system. But that level of 
mathematical modeling i don't think is really really great at this point the best you have is something like uh abms we, we we've in economics they do what's called dynamic stochastic general equilibrium models where we go from state transition of different points of equilibrium over time so you'll have an exogenous shock so let's say we have you and another person y'all have this equivalence exchange between the two and then one of your prices change and then you have to dynamically recorrect what's going on to get back to that equilibrium point right we can model that for the most part but as you expand out the amount of complexity in it from those transition stages from the exogenous to endogenous shocks it becomes extremely difficult to actually know what's going to happen in the system and it's very hard to use that for any type of uh, predictability and so rates of change, the speed at which a system is changed is crucial in determining its stability and adaptability. By studying rates of change, we identify critical points at which the system may become unstable or undergo significant transformations. So uh, thank you for joining me in this video of our lecture series on an introduction to cybernetics by Ashby. In the next video, we'll be diving into chapter three, where we'll learn about determinacy. Make sure to subscri subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on the series. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And I will see you in the next video.